Hi everyone, welcome to MDVOD, your health live and on demand. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today you'll learn about high blood pressure, the silent killer that affects one in three Americans and what you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones. Whether you're a teacher, a construction worker, an executive, or even former President Bill Clinton, all of us are at risk. As we do with every illness, we'll help you understand what high blood pressure is, who's at risk, the potential dangers, and common symptoms. And later, we'll be joined by leading expert, Dr. Robert Waldman, to discuss how to make the diagnosis, effective treatments and therapies, and whether insurance covers the cost. So join us as we simplify this common and treatable disease and arm you with the tools you need to keep your blood pressure in check. Welcome back to MDVOD here on EmpowerMe.TV. Today we're talking about high blood pressure. So let's start by asking what high blood pressure actually is. High blood pressure, often referred to as hypertension, occurs when the pressure inside the circulatory system becomes elevated and damages the delicate inner lining of the blood vessels known as arteries, the tube-like structures that carry precious oxygen and nutrients to our vital organs. Although there are various stages of high blood pressure, typically we make the diagnosis if it's greater than 140 over 90 on three different occasions. So what's the potential risk of high blood pressure? Over time, high blood pressure can permanently damage the heart, brain, and kidneys. In fact, if you have high blood pressure, you're at increased risk for a heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure, which is why it's so important for you to know what your blood pressure is and get it treated if it's elevated. So how do I get it? High blood pressure, most of the time, is caused by something we don't know about. It's known as idiopathic. But in rare cases, it's caused by certain tumors that secrete hormones like aldosterone and cortisol. Who's at danger? Well, according to the American Heart Association, in the United States, about 76 million people over the age of 20 have high blood pressure. And 50% don't have it under control. And we also know that high blood pressure is on the rise. When we come back to help us better understand the symptoms, available therapies, and related costs, joining us here in the studio is high blood pressure expert, Dr. Robert Waldman. So stick around and learn about your blood pressure. Joining us in the studio is blood pressure expert and nephrologist, Dr. Robert Waldman. Dr. Waldman, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. As you know, today we're talking about high blood pressure. How do you diagnose it and how do you treat it? And Dr. Waldman, how do you diagnose high blood pressure? High blood pressure is defined as two blood pressures on three separate occasions that are measured 140 over 90 or greater. Mm -hmm. And I would accept that uh, on the part of uh, a patient who measured at home with a digital reading. It turns out digital monitors are more accurate possibly than the old Svigmo manometer that we use in our offices. So mm -hmm. two, two readings, three times elevated mm -hmm. above 140 over 90 is my definition. So three different occasions of blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. What about uh, patients that tell you about uh, white coat high blood pressure or white coat hypertension? Is that a real thing? I think it's definitely a real thing. Um, I, I think it's a good practice to have patients who, in whom one's concerned about elevated readings measure themselves at home, have, have our office nurses measured. That often is less intimidating. And despite all of the above, there are patients who get so anxious when they measure their blood pressure or have it measured that we get artificially elevated readings. Got it. Hence, no white coat. Hence, no white coat and no white coat in my office either. Feel my blood pressure. No, I'm kidding. So um, once it's diagnosed, once you have three different occasions, you got blood pressure greater than 140 over 90, how, how do you treat the disease? How do you start treating high blood pressure? That's, that's a great question. There are multiple possible ways to initiate treatment of high blood pressure. I think that in 2012, we have a large armamentarium of medications that are largely side effect free. 
There are some gender differences that are important, so we wouldn't want to give a man a medication that's likely to cause ED, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, and then there are clearly medicines that we would use in someone who had kidney disease or diabetes in addition to the high blood pressure. I think the best practice currently would be to use a generic ACE inhibitor, angiotensin converting inhibitor, as initiation, uh, as an initiating drug because they're long acting, they can be used once a day, they are relatively side effect free as you know, and uh, protective of both cardiac and renal function. So you pick your drug or the drug for high blood pressure based on a lot of other factors. For example, whether you have diabetes or whether you're male or female. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And I hate, to, I hate to use a cliche, but what we're all taught in medical school is very appropriate in this setting. We want to pick uh, or individualize therapy. We want, a, we want a, an antihypertensive medicine that's going to be appropriate to the specific given individual. That's great advice. And what's the role for, let's say, exercise and diet and blood pressure? Lifestyle modification is a, an extremely important approach towards managing anybody with high blood pressure. As you know, there's an epidemic of obesity in our country. If you have someone who is overweight, then clearly a 10% reduction in body weight is going to have a large impact on blood pressure management. Exercise, calorie restriction are going to be the way to implement that, and improving cardiovascular fitness is going to improve cardiovascular function and blood pressure. And so lifestyle modification is extremely important. However, my own personal bias would be to get ahead of the game by lowering blood pressure while we're working on lifestyle modification. Outstanding advice. And you know, that really goes for most diseases, especially heart diseases. You know, get up and move, Let's, that's exercise, because that lowers your blood pressure, and eat the right foods. Is there anything in particular that you might want to avoid if you have high blood pressure? Well, it's controversial again in 2012 because we've all been taught for many, many years salt restriction is really important in managing blood pressure. However, it turns out that that might not be the case. Mm. And I'm phrasing it that way on purpose because in another year or two, maybe there'll be different evidence or that mm. might change. But I think it's wise to salt restrict our patients. Mm -hmm. I think a routine American diet is tremendously excessive in sodium. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what I like to prescribe is fairly easy and no added salt diet, meaning don't buy foods that come caked with salt, don't cook with salt, and after your food is prepared, don't shake salt on it. There mm -hmm. are many, many other spices that can be substituted, mm. pepper and garlic, a couple fast ones that come to mind. Outstanding and advice. I think that's a, a good initial approach. That's great advice. And, and when, once you've diagnosed high blood pressure, you've treated someone with, um, you know, you've emphasized uh, lifestyle changes, what are some of the more common medications that you might start someone on? Speaking with respect to classes, then we have ACE inhibitors, mm -hmm. angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are commonly used. Beta blockers are very commonly used, and there are many long-acting beta blockers that are easy to administer. Mm -hmm. Vasodilators such as amlodipine and mm -hmm. diltiazem are long-acting and are excellent blood pressure lowering agents. And our old tried and true uh, old, old medications such as thiazide diuretics, particularly chlorothalidone and hydrochlorothiazide, are excellent. So we have, we have at least four or five different classes of agents, all of which have generic uh, medications available in them so that we can provide long-acting, easy to administer, safe and side effect free medication. So that's a, another great point. There are many medications we can use for blood pressure today and as Dr. Waldman points out, you know, these drugs, they have to be individualized. Certain patients will do better on one drug uh, as opposed to another. And, and that's why it's really important to see your doctor um, get your blood pressure checked and get on the right uh, medications. Um, and on that note, um, after you've been treated with the correct medication, Dr. Waldman, what are the most common side effects? You mentioned uh, men versus women and some drugs you might pick as opposed, uh, one, uh, as opposed to another. What are some of the more common side effects of these medications? Common side effects, for instance, with vasodilators, salt and water retention that cause edema, 
Allergy, of course, is a concern with the onset, with the initiation of any specific new medication. Cough with converting enzyme inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Angiotensin receptor blockers are newer agents I didn't mention before. They're relatively side effect free, so they're very nice to use. Low potassium with mm -hmm. diuretic therapy, gout with diuretic therapy excessive uh, sleepiness with beta blockers in men, lowering blood pressure is often associated with erectile dysfunction, basically using almost any of the medications, but most prominent with beta blockers. Mm -hmm. And so, again, as with any medical program, the most important thing is follow-up, mm -hmm. follow-up, ongoing care, mm -hmm. follow-up, and it, it improves compliance, and it also ensures that if a side effect develops, we have an opportunity to change agents so the patient doesn't stop the medication. So, you know, Dr. Waldman, um, high blood pressure is incredibly expensive. It costs us uh, on the order of $93 billion a year. Is, is there anything that you can think of that might decrease that cost? To start with, it's very important to educate your patient. That's part of our job when we meet with a patient and initiate a treatment plan. It's a team approach, and the center of the team has to be the patient. And I like to impress upon the patient that number one, if there are side effects, call me and let's discuss them and let's switch medicines or see if we can find a way to provide side effect free care. That's, that's number one. Number two, I want a commitment from the patient to take the medicine as prescribed and to come to follow up as prescribed so that we can have ongoing care. And then number three, I always make an effort to use generic medication so that it's inexpensive for the patient. We have to be very sensitive, John, as prescribing physicians in 2012, that that's an important issue. We are fortunate, however, in California particularly, that there are a number of pharmacies that will provide large quantities of generic medications at very, very inexpensive prices. So we have a great variety of medications that are effective, and we have a great number of generic products that we can provide. And it's my hope that given any individual patient, we can find something that's A, side effect free, B, cost effective, and C, really works. Thank you, Dr. Waldman, that's great advice. And remember, most insurance, car insurance carriers will cover doctor visits and also treatments for your blood pressure. Um, but make sure you check with your carrier because specific medications, as Dr. Waldman points out, generic medications, for example, are covered by particular insurers. So you gotta know which one is covered. Thank you, Dr. Waldman, so much for Thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me. Pleasure. Again, it's important to note, most of the time, people don't feel high blood pressure. Though occasionally symptoms can include headache, fatigue or confusion, visual problems, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or palpitations. Up next in our Apple a Day segment, learn more about how to prevent high blood pressure without spending a dime. A great rule of thumb for the treatment and prevention of any disease is combining a healthy diet with exercise and stress reduction. Here are some tips of how to treat and prevent high blood pressure. Diet. In general, lower sodium and foods high in potassium will lower your blood pressure. And remember to limit alcohol consumption. Exercise. Although exercise regimens should be individualized, in general, walking briskly for 30 minutes five days a week will lower your blood pressure and reduce your risk of a heart attack and stroke. Stress reduction. More and more data is showing how our fast-paced, multitasking lifestyles are wreaking havoc on our health, in particular, our heart and cardiovascular system. So remember to take a load off and de-stress. Go take a Tai Chi, Pilates, yoga, or Qigong class. Practice deep breathing and visualization techniques. So that's the scoop on high blood pressure. It's a common disease that if unrecognized can wreak havoc on our health but with correct diagnosis and treatment, we can prevent heart attacks, stroke, and kidney failure. If you have any of the symptoms we've discussed today, please speak with your medical professional and get help now. And for more information, visit the CDC's website on your screen and empowerme.tv, because the more knowledgeable you are, the healthier you will be. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found this information on high blood pressure helpful. I'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Robert Waldman, for sharing his wisdom and for giving us more thorough understanding 
of this important disease. And be sure to check out the bonus clip for this episode where a patient living with high blood pressure shares her experience with this disease. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and thank you for joining us here on MDVOD, your health live and on demand. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and join this conversation. Thanks for joining us.